Greetings everyone. If we continue today our discussion of Prabhupada's book Bhakti Yoga, The Path of Love, at this period of time we are reading from the preface and in our last meeting we discuss a paragraph that speak about disciplehood and we will continue to read from this paragraph today. Prabhuji writes, I am the disciple of the seer, an enlightened being, somebody who is nobody. I was initiated in my spiritual childhood by the moonlight. A seagull who loved flying more than anything else in life inspired me. In our previous meeting, we discussed the first sentence of this paragraph and we discussed in a few words what it means to be a disciple. And today I would like to continue with the uh, following sentences. In different religious and spiritual traditions, initiation symbolizes the beginning of the spiritual life. Within Sanatana Dharma tradition, the initiation or the Diksha considered to be one of the most important samskaras. Samskara can be translated from Sanskrit as a very profound imprint that shape who we become in this life. It is so important that spiritual aspirants who go through this process of initiation called Dvija Bandhu or twice born. So this process of Diksha considered to be a second birth. When he speaks about initiation in his spiritual childhood, I believe Prabhuji refers to the transformative mystical experience at the age of eight that ignited his search for truth and shaped the rest of his life. In our previous conversation, we discussed that our disciplehood begins from the point that we don't know. And here I see another aspect of it. In different scriptures, in different ways, we find this, this requirement or guidance to become a child in order to advance and in order to be able to receive the divine wisdom. In the Hebrew Talmud, which one of the most incredible scriptures within Hebrew tradition and maybe in the world in general, which is, which is a discussion of an enlightened sages throughout many generations, in Masachet, or part of the Talmud, called Baba Batra, it is said that, quoting a great uh, Mora, or great sage of antiquity, Rabbi Yohanan, it is said that after this destruction of the second temple, Mevoa, which often translated as the prophetic ability, but as Prabhuji explained, it's, this concept of Nevoa is much deeper than that and it's actually more he refers to what we call enlightenment or samadhi or satori or nirvana, the state that we can be impregnated by the divine, that we can be open, that can, we can become a divine instrument. So in Bhava Bhatra, Rabbi Yohanan says that after the destruction of the second temple, which refers to the second Jewish temple, the nevoah, or this 
experience, this divine experience, was taken from the prophets and given to Sotim, which can be translated as crazy people or imbeciles, and babies, Tinokot in Hebrew. And we hear echo of these words in New Testament, in Matthew 18, when uh, answering the questions of his disciples on the topic who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus bring a child, put him in the midst of his followers and guide them, saying something like, Verily I say unto thee, that unless you transform and become like a child, you will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. So we have a very similar concept there. And I wanted to speak about it today in a few words. So why a child? And how come the, this divine experience can be given to a child? Discussing this topic on different occasions throughout the years, Prabhuji spoke about the quality of innocence. We often refer to innocence as something negative, as a certain weakness. In a similar way we refer to ignorance. But there is nothing farther from the truth. Innocence is the natural quality that all of us possess when we appear in this world. It is a genuine experience that we don't know. But not just experience that we don't know, it's a genuine openness and eagerness to learn. In the beginning of our life, it's the part of our evolution as a human being. And because of that quality, we're able to learn in the first few years of our life, often more than we learn for the rest of it. And this quality is intrinsic on our spiritual path. Unfortunately, as we engage with this world, most of us lose this quality throughout the years. We acquire many artificial goals and our life and our learning become a means in order to achieve them. We become voluntarily blind, deaf, and numb to the world around us. We no longer enjoy the beauty of the moon and the stars, the song of the birds, and the freshness of the air. Our vision becomes very narrow, solely focused to the things that are beneficial in achieving our artificial goals and desires. And here we come to the third sentence of this paragraph when Prabhuji speaks about a seagull that inspired him. The seagull that more than anything else in life loved to fly. The seagull is inspired by a beautiful novel written by Richard Bach and called Jonathan Livingston the Seagull. This novel was a great inspiration for Prabhuji and it reflects on our life in society when most of the time we spend our days trying to fulfill our basic needs and achieve a very superficial and artificial goals. And at the same time, it reflects on the value of life itself. In the case of Jonathan Livingston is the flight, is the most intrinsic natural quality that him 
and all his pack of seagulls possess. And while his pack used this incredible ability as a means to fill their bellies and to satisfy their very basic urges, Jonathan Livingston discover the beauty and the mystery of flying. This falling in love with the flight made Jonathan Livingston an outcast. He has been ridiculed and rejected by his society. And in his exploration into flight, he got crushed so many times. But this profound discovery of his natural ability made all of it so much worse. And in a similar way, when we fall in love with the truth, when we awake and realize that this life has so much more to offer, when we try to regain our innocence and live more profound, when we try to live for the sake of living, our existence is completely transformed.